Alhamdulillah, bifadlillah, we just completing and this is the conclusion of our last part of the circumstantial deen. We finished 10 part series and today is the conclusion. And the point is not even just a bayan, but the point is that what little, whatever I can do and make a concerted effort so that this amal, this opportunity, this deen, this favor which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon me, how can I capitalize on this opportunity? Uh, Mawlana Ilyas used to say that I fear a time where tabligh will become bayans and bayans will become tabligh. So eventually even the amal of deen which is a means of hidayat for the whole of mankind becomes a routine. Now we listen into bayan based on who the speaker is, based on the profile. We see in who's speaking but not what is being said. So like that again, shaitan takes away the essence of where we can maximize. Manatani Rahmatullah should say, if you hear something once, the hidayat is the most. You hear it a second time, the, the, the level and the, the status of extracting hidayat drops. So the full potential, if you heard it first time and you never got tawfiq to make amal, then your chances of making amal the second time is even less. So we see people doing amal, but the reality of those amal. And then we see people are leaving deen. People go fudge how dindar he is, when he comes back how dindar. Ramadan, how religious people are out of Ramadan. We see people that were in Parda overnight, they're out of Parda. Students who are students in Madrasa, six years in Darul What tarbiyat, what reformation has been made. So these are all based on circumstantial situations which is a outer front, is a outward cover. But we need to get the ruh, the ruh of the amal. Maulana Yusuf used to say, a bare bare amal admi ko jahannam me lega. A person will do a lot of, lot of amal, he will do great, great amal, and those big amal will take a person to jahannam. Then he used to quote the riwayat of that person who went to Medina, he met Hazrat Abu Hurair, and he seen in a masjid, there was a, a, a in a place where there was a majlis a gathering and he went to sit close and he asked people who is this and he said this is Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu so he went close to Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu and then he asked him a question they tell me something which you heard of the Nabi of Allah so he said oh, hadithanaka hadithan haddathanihi Rasulullah I will tell you a narration I heard directly from the Nabi of Allah and then he fell unconscious we waited for a while, Thumma Faqa, he regained consciousness. Then he said again, لَأُحَدِّثَنَّكَ حَدِيثًا حَدَّثَنِيهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And he fell unconscious again. Then for the third time, he said, I'm going to tell you something which I heard the Nabi of Allah. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, who is the muhaddis of the ummah, was pondering that am I not part of this hadith, that fear, that concern, overwhelmed him and then he said that on a day of Qiyamah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call three people Rajulun Jam'al Quran Allah gave tawfiq somebody to become a scholar of deen and he memorized the Quran and he understood the meanings of the Quran and he was making tabligh of the Quran Rajulun Qudila Fi Sabilillah and a person who got tawfiq to go out in the path of Allah and die shaheed وَرَجُلٌ كَثِيرُ المال And somebody who Allah is blessed with wealth And each one will be called forward And the scholar will be asked why, What did you do? He said, no, I practiced on it I read the Quran, I propagated it Allah will say, no, كَذَبْتَ The farishta will say, كَذَبْتَ You are speaking a lie You did it so that it will be said فُلَانُ النقاري. It will be known You wanted to be renowned You wanted fame You wanted name You wanted people to call you so your, your channel of deen was more for fame and name than for Allah. فَقَدْ قِيلَ ذَلِكَ It was said, you got fame in dunya. And another person who became shaheed, he will be asked, he said, Ya Allah, I went in your path, I strove, I became shaheed. كَذَبْتَ You spoke a lie. Farishas will say, you are lying. 
he wanted to be say fulan and chariyun he wanted people to say mashallah he goes at in the jamaat he goes at in the path of allah mashallah he's a warrior he's strong in allah's path and the person who spent it he said allah i spent it for you ya allah i did it so i could give charity and i did this but you wanted to say fulan and jawadun that that person is a very generous but mashallah he donates in that you make sure your name was inscribed in the masjid you make sure people knew your name so these are examples in the hadith to show great great amal great great amal so what about other amal this is ulaika thalatha awwal khalq allah tusa'aru bihim an-nar yawm al-qiyamah these will be the first three people which jahannam will be ignited the first three people who will be thrown in the fire of Jahannam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, we make dua to Allah. This narration was mentioned to Hazrat Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, فَبَكَا بُكَاءً شَدِيدًا Hazrat Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, fell in tears, حَتَّى ظَنَنَّا أَنَّهُ هَالِكٌ We had fear and we thought so that Hazrat Muawiyah radiallahu anhu will die, his room will leave him. So much he was in grief and concern. So it's not just, just doing the amal, but it's perfecting the amal. So a person is doing dhikr, set aside. Firstly, we need to do all our amal for the day. The husband and wife, the family need to make mashwara. What's our 24 hour roster? Then fix the amal in the roster, fix the time, fix the duration, fix the quantity. For example, dhikr. Dhikr will be making morning and evening, after Fajr, after Asr, what quantity? Hundred, third kalima, durood, istighfar. Then fix the time, besides the amal. Because sometimes shaitan will come and make us rush to finish the amal. So if a person can't fix the time, at least he should finish the amal. And secondly, afterwards, if Allah gives him tawfiq, then fix the time. But primarily, now that we fixed our dhikr, fix I amount for khushu. So if I'm going to do 100, for example, durood, now I should do 5 or 10, what concentration? Likewise, still out of Quran. Fix the time, place, quantity, etc. But what you're reading for your daily mamul, a specific time for khushu. Whether it's one ayah also. I'm going to take this one ayah. I'm going to ponder on this ayat. I'm going to make tadabbur. Afala yatadabbaroon al-Quran. For example, if it's salah. My salah I'm reading, that's the normal salah, then the nawafil, etc. But take one nafil, for example, ishraq. Take one time where you are comfortable, you feel you are free and you're not in a rush. And say, until I don't just get this one, two rakats right, I'm going to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. So I need to get this one, two rakats, then my second two rakats, then move to another salat, for example, awabin or tahajjud salat. So we move from our nawafil to a sunnah de ghair muakkada to sunnah de muakkada then farayil. So khushu will come first in our nawafil, then will come in our far. And like how a person who goes to work, his job is stipulated, his profile is stipulated, his responsibilities are st stipulated, the time where he starts his work is stipulated, from the time he ends his work is stipulated. Everything is clear cut. So that needs to be fixed, that schedule needs to be put up. Then we need people to check on us. We made a mashwara, now we need kar guzari, we need to take a report. This was our targets, who in the family have achieved these targets. So like how in the world, dunya we think we achieve things for deen also. And that's in everything, in our sleeping, in our eating. The masturat can get great, great ajar in, in just cooking. There was one great buzruk. And uh, he told his mother one day that, MashaAllah, Allah has given me such spiritual heights and I've made so much sacrifice. So the mother said, no, it's not your sacrifice. He said, no, no, I... So the mother said, okay, no problem. If you think so, it's your achievements and your sacrifices, then let it be. So anyway, after a while he came back and he complained to his mother that I've lost all my anwarat, I've lost his And She said, you know what? It was my mamul and habit and routine. I used to make your food with hudu. And I used to make dhikr all the time when making the food. And not a day had passed where I didn't make dua from, for you. She said, after that day you told me it was your achievements, I stopped doing all of the above. So our every 24 hour day can be an ibadat. 
but we need to check ourselves that how am I doing this amal? What, what? It shouldn't be just a zoi there, but it should be the button. That's why they say many people have money, but, but what's behind that money? You want to buy a bed, no problem, but you can't buy sleep. That's a button, that's the reality of it. You have money, you can buy a lot of books, but you can't buy any wisdom. A person has money, he's going to buy food, all the delic delicacies, whatever money can buy. But he can't buy an appetite. Somebody is ill, he wants to buy a medicine, he wants to get the best doctors, go to the best clinic. He can buy all of that, but he's not going to buy himself health. You can buy all the findings of life, but you're not going to buy beauty. So somebody can buy, he wants a scenery, he can buy the drawings, he can buy the paintings, but he can't buy artistry because that's not going to make you an artist. That's an internal skill. You want to buy the biggest house, most luxury house, no problem. But you're not buying a home. There's something else behind it. You want to buy all the luxuries, all the enjoy, all the pleasures, but those luxuries cannot buy you pleasure. Somebody wants to buy companions, he says, oh money, I've got a lot of companions. You can buy companions, but you can't buy a friend. There's a difference. Somebody wants to buy the best clothes. You can have it, but you can't buy personality. You want to buy marriage, you want to buy that avenue, yes, but you're not going to buy love. Because that's an internal effort. With money we can buy anything and everything, but can we buy Jannah? Can we buy honor and respect in Akhirat? Can we, can we buy the companionship of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam? So the outside is one thing, I've got everything, but the inside, the crunch, the reality behind it, have I achieved that or not? So we need to check ourselves and we shouldn't be influenced by the environment, the mahal, uh, and that's that's what Batil, the, uh, what my Nabi told me, whether I understand it or not, whether it makes sense or not, what my Allah has commanded me, I need to do that. Everything else is immaterial, it's insignificance. So how much time am I giving for the Western influence and how much time am I giving for my Nabi's influence? And there, were, there was one person in a small coastal village, he was at the pier, he had a small boat, he was a fisherman, he was docked there. And an investment banker was passing by, so he stopped by this fisherman, he looked in the boat, he seen there was fish, tuna fish there. And he seen this person relaxing on the pier, enjoying the breeze, enjoying the waves of the ocean, enjoying the view. So, uh, this investment banker, questioned him and said that, uh, what do you do? Uh, what's your pastime? So he said, no, I'm a fisherman. This is what I do. I do fishing. And he said, when you're when you when you're done with your fishing, he said, I spend a little time, get what I need, and then I go home. I spend time with my family. I spend what time with my wife. I spend uh, time with my children. I, whatever I needed for the day, I catch that, and I do what's more important. So he said, what's more important? He said, I get time to read my salah, I get time to make my tilawat. I get time to help my wife to do the chores in the house, in the kitchen. And if there's people, needy people in the village, then I go and I help the needy people, the elderly people. So he says, I, I have a very, he said, uh, I have a very busy life. So that person said, I'm a Harvard graduate, I'm an MBA, I've got expertise in uh, management and, and expansion and I can give you a lot of advice. So he said, what what, what will your advice help me? Tell me, see. So he said, you know, firstly, you got a small boat now and you're just catching enough fish. You should spend more time. You're spending, you're too busy on other things. You need to be busy on this here. This is important. So catch a lot of fish. Don't catch enough for what you need. So uh, he said, then what? He said, then you buy another boat. He said, then what? Then you get bigger boats. Then what? Then you buy a fleet. He said, then what? He said, then you go into the deep oceans and you have the strolls. Uh, then you cut out the middleman from the chain. And then you have your own processing plant. 
and then you start processing, then you control the production line, and then you control the distribution, and you have an expanding uh, empire and enterprise. He said, then what? He said, then no, obviously, because this is a village and it's, uh, it's a coastal area, it's out from civilization, your, your, your corporation needs to be in the central hub. So you move to a big city, then what? Now like you expand, uh, then you establish your business. He said, then what? Uh, he said, then now you, you, you consider your retirement. So he said, how long will that take? He said, probably 15, 20, 30 years. He said, then what? He said, then you sell, you launch an IPO, you go into the stock market, stock exchange, you sell your company stocks, you become very rich. And then you're a millionaire and a billionaire. He said, then what? He said, then you come, you invest your money into a coastal area, you... You've got your retirement package, you've invested it in places where you're getting in complete income. He said, then what? He said, then you relax, you enjoy life with your wife and kids. So this fisherman said, what am I doing now? What am I doing now? You want me to go through a 15, 20, 30 year cycle of a routine without any benefit, destroying my dunya and akhirat. Because the scenario you're given is all speculation, right? If thus, then thus. If thus, then thus. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of checking our a'mal all the time, making a 24-hour routine. And we, there's a lot of, inshallah, Allah give us tawfiq to, to go into details of the asbab of hidayat, of istiqamat, etc. But hidayat is in Allah's hands and according to our jazba and desire in our heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up. Wa akhir dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. The dua for today is that a person should read three times morning and evening. Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami dina wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiya wa rasoola. Whoever does this three times morning and evening and this is this is power pack. These ideas are so short, so simple, so easy. Very unfortunate is a person who doesn't get tawfiq to do these amal. Then Nabi alayhi salam said, فَأَنَا الزَّعِيمُ لَأَخُذَنَّ بِيَدِهِ I am his guardian, I am his protector, I stand guarantor for this person, I will take him by his hand. حَتَّى أُدْخِلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ And I will make sure I will take him into Jannah. Another riwayat, كَانَ حَقًّا عَلَى اللَّهِ أَنْ يُرْدِيَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes uh, responsibility to make him happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes personal responsibility. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a responsibility to make him happy, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him happy in dunya and akhirat. The amal for today is, Last we did was the four rakats after Isha, two and two. And previously we did that the two or four rakats of Salatul Ishraq. That's 10 to 15, 15 to 20 minutes uh, after sunrise to read the four rakats. Then ulama say you can read Salatul Duha until before Zawal. Salatul Duha is eight rakats. So two, four, six, eight. And the other two or four Salatul Ishraq. Man salla arba'an Whoever reads these four rakats Kutub kutub min al-abidin He's written from among those people who worship Allah The worshippers Man salla sitan Kufiya dhalika al-yawm Whoever reads six Allah will suffice for all his needs Man salla thamaniyan Kataba Allah lahum min al-qanitin Whoever reads eight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will regard him And write him from amongst the qanitin Obedient servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Man salla thinday ashrata rak'atan and whoever reads the 12 rakats, Ban Allah lahu baytan fil jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for him a house in jannah. Another riwayat, Qasran fil jannah min dhahabin. A palace in jannah that is made of gold. Inna fil jannati baban yuqalu lahu buha. In jannah there is a special door, a special entrance, a VIP entrance. Faida kana yawm al qiyama nada munadin. A proclaimer will say, Aina alladhina kaadun. يَجُدِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ الدُّحَى We are those people who are perpetual and had istiqamat and were punctual with reading Salatul Duha. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika.